Did you know that more than 50 million people in the United States alone suffer from some form of tinnitus? That's about 15% of the population. And here's something even more surprising. Nearly one third of them have tried at least one supplement in hopes of silencing the ringing in their ears. But how many of those supplements actually work and which ones are just marketing hype? I'm Dr. Hamid Jalilian. I'm a neurotologist and skull base surgeon. For over two decades, I've worked with patients struggling with hearing loss, balance disorders, and of course, tinnitus. And if you've been scrolling the internet, reading forums, or watching videos, trying to figure out what to take for your tinnitus, I understand it's frustrating, it's overwhelming, and above all, it can feel hopeless. But let me help you cut through the noise, literally and figuratively. Let's start with the big one, ginkgo biloba. You've probably seen this pop up more times than you can count. Some people swear by it, others say it did nothing. So what's the truth? Ginkgo has been studied in dozens of clinical trials. And while a few showed modest improvement in tinnitus symptoms, most well-designed placebo-controlled studies found no significant benefit. It turns out that many of the early studies had small sample sizes or lacked rigorous design. So if you're taking ginkgo, you're not harming yourself, but the evidence just isn't compelling. And if it helps you, it might be due to placebo more than pharmacology. What about magnesium? This is another common supplement touted for tinnitus. Why? Because magnesium plays a critical role in nerve function and protecting the ear from damage caused by loud noise. There is some data showing that magnesium deficiency can worsen tinnitus. In particular, people exposed to noise trauma, like musicians or veterans, may benefit. But does supplementing magnesium help everyone with tinnitus? Not necessarily. If your levels are already normal, adding more likely won't make a difference. But if you're deficient, correcting that can sometimes offer noticeable relief. So it comes down to proper testing and individualization. Let's move to zinc. Zinc deficiency has been linked to hearing loss and tinnitus in some small studies. One theory is that zinc supports the cochlea and the auditory pathways in the brain. But again, the evidence is mixed. Some trials suggest a mild improvement in symptoms, especially in people with low zinc levels to begin with, but large-scale studies don't show consistent benefits. So just like with magnesium, if you're low in zinc, supplementation might help, but if you're not, it's probably not gonna do much. And what about a vitamin B12? Now this is interesting. B12 is crucial for nerve health. A deficiency can lead to neurological issues, including tinnitus. In fact, one study found that a significant percentage of tinnitus patients had low B12 levels. In those cases, supplementation improved symptoms. But again, the key point is this, only if you're deficient. Oui. Simply taking B12 when your levels are normal doesn't provide much benefit. So before you go buying bottles of vitamins, ask yourself, have you been tested? That brings us to Baichu melatonin. This one is particularly fascinating because it doesn't just target the auditory pathways, it helps with sleep. And for many tinnitus sufferers, sleep is where things get worse. The silence of night makes the ringing feel louder. Melatonin can help reduce that perception and improve overall quality of sleep. Several studies have shown positive effects with melatonin, even when it didn't reduce the volume of tinnitus itself. Better sleep can lead to better coping, and for that reason alone, it can be a valuable part of a tinnitus regimen. Have you heard of Naki Ku or N acetylcysteine? It's a powerful antioxidant and precursor to glutathione, the master antioxidant in your body. NAC has shown protective effects against noise induced hearing loss in animal studies. In humans, results are more variable. There's some indication that NAQ may help prevent tinnitus after acute noise exposure, but less evidence for treating chronic tinnitus. Still, for people with a history of loud sound exposure, NAQ might have a protective or stabilizing effect. Now let's talk about alpha lipoic acid and coenzyme q pentoxides. These are both antioxidants that support mitochondrial function. Since the inner ear is highly metabolic and vulnerable to oxidative stress, the logic is that antioxidants could help. Some small studies have shown modest improvements with these supplements, especially in patients with metabolic syndrome or diabetes. Again, the results aren't definitive, but they are promising enough for certain groups to consider trying them. What about homeopathic remedies? Let me be clear here, most homeopathic products have no scientific backing 
for treating tinnitus. Many contain extreme dilutions that are unlikely to have any biological effect. And while placebo can be powerful, we have to be honest about what we recommend. If something has no known mechanism, no reliable evidence, and no consistency, it should be approached with caution. So what does all of this mean? Are supplements useless? Not at all, but here's the key point. Supplements are tools, not cures. They need to be part of a bigger strategy. That strategy includes sound therapy, stress reduction, sleep optimization, and in some cases, cognitive behavioral therapy. Supplements can support the system, but they rarely fix the problem alone. Let's take a step back. Why are so many people reaching for pills in the first place? Because they feel desperate. Tinnitus is invisible. It's isolating, and when traditional medicine says there's nothing we can do, people turn to anything that offers hope. That's understandable, but we have to balance hope with evidence. Otherwise, we waste time, money, and energy chasing false leads. So how do you approach this wisely? First, get tested. Know your levels of B12, magnesium, zinc, rule out thyroid dysfunction, anemia, and autoimmune conditions. Get a hearing test. Tinnitus is often linked to even minor hearing loss. Understand your stress levels and sleep patterns. Once you have that foundation, build your strategy. If you're deficient in a nutrient, correct it. If you have trouble sleeping, consider melatonin. If you're under oxidative stress from noise exposure or inflammation, try NA or CoQ10. And combine that with practices like mindfulness, sound enrichment, regular physical activity, and reducing caffeine and alcohol. And finally, stay skeptical, but open-minded. The supplement industry is massive and poorly regulated. Just because something is natural doesn't mean it's safe. Look for third-party tested brands. Start low, go slow, and track your symptoms. What gets measured gets managed. I've seen patients go from feeling completely defeated to finally finding a combination that helps. Not because of one magic pill, but because they took a thoughtful, informed approach. If you're looking for a place to start, I've linked some high quality supplements in the description that I trust and often suggest to my patients. You'll also find a free checklist to help you evaluate which ones might be right for you. And if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing. I post regular updates on tinnitus treatments, hearing loss research, and ways to protect your ears and your brain for the long term. You don't have to live with the ringing forever. It may not disappear overnight, but with the right strategy, you can learn to manage it and reclaim your peace of mind. Thanks for watching and take good care of your ears.